Today we're going to have a little discussion on file formats. The first obvious question is, what should I set my camera to? JPEG or RAW? JPEG, straight out of the camera, gives us the advantage of smaller file size. If you're doing uh, rapid shots, you get a much faster shoot rate in many cameras. Uh, the JPEGs are a standard viewing format, so they're suitable for the web, for the screen, for your printer, etc. And uh, uh, generally, they're, they're quite good. One thing which is a plus and a minus, they're 8-bit, uh, where our sensors are typically now about 14-bit. So we haven't quite got all the information from the sensor, but 8-bit, most screens and most printers can only print 8-bit, so the colour resolution of our JPEG matches most of our screens and printers. So what are the minuses of JPEGs? Uh, it's only 8-bit, where our camera is 14-bit typically, so we've only, um, you know, we're losing quite a bit of information there. The other one is, it is lossy compression. That means the JPEG file doesn't have quite the same information in it that the original image had. Right, the alternative is, is RAW. Uh, so... RAW has the advantage is it is basically the information from the sensor saved into a file. Uh, it gives you the maximum editing flexibility. You can do the most with a RAW file of any formats that you're going to get out of your camera. So what are the problems of RAW file? considering the, the advantages as it's the full information that your camera took when you press the shutter. Well, each camera's got its own RAW format, so it's not a simple matter of viewing it. You have to have a program that knows how to interpret your camera's RAW file format before you can view it. That means it must be processed before you can do anything like print it or send it off to a competition, publish it on the web, something like that. That processing a lot of people will refer to as developing your raw image. And One of the other disadvantages is it'll be larger than your JPEG, typically 5 to 10 times the file size. So it's taking up more room on your card and often slows the camera down in doing that save. Right, let's have a look at both the RAW and the JPEG. Now the image on the left is the JPEG straight out of the camera. The image on the right is the RAW. It's a bit like chalk and cheese really, isn't it? Maybe that's a bit unfair because as I said, the RAW image had to be developed or processed and the JPEG is straight out of the camera. So let's have a look at what happens when we process the JPEG. Well, now you can see that the sky has got a bit more detail and they're a little bit closer, but there is just so much more in that raw image that uh, that's why I tend to set the camera on raw myself. But again, you might consider this a bit unfair because I have chosen this photo because of the harshness of the sky and the range between the light and the dark areas, which is where a JPEG has maximum problems in resolving. Now if we have a look at our next image, we can see that again on the left we have the JPEG straight out of the camera and on the right we have the raw image uh, processed. And here it is very hard to pick the difference between the two. The light levels were much more even and the JPEG was able to capture the full range of light levels that are available. So it has got very little loss and the RAW doesn't offer a huge advantage. So it just shows you that the JPEGs can be quite good but that first photograph I showed you, 
highlight some of the limits you have when you're shooting JPEGs in harsher light conditions. So as I said, with this sort of uh, illustration, you can see why I have chosen to set my camera to RAW, but I know there are other photographers who have set their camera to JPEG and are quite happy. If you're unsure, memory is cheap. Set your camera to both RAW and JPEG. Most of them will do that. Then you have the best of both worlds. If the JPEG's good, you can use your JPEG. If the RAW's good, you can use the RAW and develop it up uh, to give you a better image than JPEG. That's enough for part one. Part two will look at what we use in processing and also what we might use for cross-processing where we go from one program to another to enhance the image. Thank you.